Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is just a ladder game, mostly because I've been hurting for content. I still want to do the... Uh, I've been having trouble finding the Gosu League replays. I thought I had them lined up, but I in fact ended up with the uh, Chobo League replays. This is going to be Snow versus a high-level Zerg, which is 4SH, 5SH, 6SM. Not sure who that is, but it could be any of the professionals. There's been actually... Since ASL has started to get underway, I've noticed that the known pro user IDs where they've been available to get the replays have suddenly dried up. Um, which makes sense, they're probably... And I also feel bad because I feel like a lot of the ASL previews I did, Fantasy opted not to participate, Flash is having some health issues, uh, I don't... Uh, I, Zealot made it to the lower rounds, uh, Tay actually did pretty well through the qualifiers, but in fact I'm thinking... I think he went into one of the qualifiers with DeWalt, I'm not 100% positive, but anyway. Look for other stuff coming up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to commentate it. I've been asked to do it once again, but time commitments are huge for the Newer Worlds uh, map contest, which has pros and DeWalt is also in that. That should actually be really exciting. It's always amazing when a top-level foreigner is able to play against a professional Korean, so though he's going up in the same bracket as, I think, Action and Royals, so that's going to be a really tough group. But also, next Saturday, August 12th, I will try to upload this before then, or August 11th, or I should have looked it up in between. Okay, let's do the math here. Today's August 3rd. That means Saturday, so Friday, Saturday is, uh, th th that will be 6. 6 plus 7 is in fact 13. Am I off on that? No, it's the uh, 12th. I, I believe it's 11th or 12th. Whatever that day of the Saturday is, it will be on Artosis's channel. It's going to be the largest collection of American Brood War talent since World Cyber Games in like 2010. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Anyway, seeing a quick scout, I'm just going to call him four. Four going for a scout. Looks like Snow is going to be able to sneak across. Snow opting for gateway first. That seems to be the standard thing to do these days. Love and Hatch into spawning pool from four. We'll see if he's got anything interesting for Snow overall or if this is just going to be a stomp. Not going for the extractor right away. So, in fact, this is... Let's see if this is going to be a third hatchery build attempt. But right this second, yeah, no gas grab whatsoever. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be an attempt at a third hatch, which I'm shocked against. Knowing this is snow, trying that with an open probe out in the field is a bit shocking. But another drone wandering all the way out. This drone looks like it's found the base and is sneaking back across. First cell, it's out. Maybe this is nerves. So now moving back. Three o'clock base being grabbed. Snow spotting it and noting it. Now he's got options to attack. So moving the zealot looks like into that three o'clock location. Second zealot's going to meet him there and the probe's gonna go ahead and continue scouting and is going to see how many zerglings are produced. It looks like we are going to see cadre of six. The extractor just now finishing around the 308 mark. Zerglings looking to group up. Zealot already starting to get some preemptive damage done and it looks like it's gonna be eight zerglings because we had that looks like two spawn out of the natural and additional zerglings being built and look at that timing from snow knowing the exact moment to just go ahead and pull those zealots out probe at least has been spotted by the zergling and i i am assuming we're going to see some sort of hydralisk opener off this just because this would be a very late spire play attempt by four otherwise interesting pylon placement here by snow dropping a forge in his main rather than at the natural probably going to drop a seven x score at the natural he's really not Worried about the Zergling threat whatsoever. The Zealot's getting some great engagement opportunity. Great pl Look, that's pro play right there. Forcing, so rather than making their way all the way ar around, and look at this, still has the probe wandering around in the main, has all the information, is forcing all the units, and four is just playing this extremely resource light. He's got 12 drones to his name right this second, which is uh, not the best. Looks like he is going to tech straight to lair. I'm wondering if this is just kind of a panic build, knowing he's going up against a pro. Finally, the Zergling's able to cycle around and get this around. Zealot able to shoot through a good amount of Zerglings, and these four Zerglings have still had trouble versus this probe overall. Finally, a cannon and a cybernetics core being dropped. Three Zealots are out in the front. No second gas. Well, actually, a little bit earlier for the second gas. We'll see what Snow decides to do. He might be thrown off by this overall. So, Lair dropped. He is getting the Stargate, preventatively, in the main. 
which is the correct call. And we'll see if this turns into an attempt at four hatch play, or if this is going to be just straight up three hatch mutilisk. The drone count is starting to surge towards the point where that might be a little bit possible. But the gas, we'll see how the gas does uh, between here and there. We do have gas being stored, circling speed being upgraded as well. Good amount of zealots on the front. Double Stargate for Snow. Definitely wants to take air control and going plus one weapons. And on top of that, if these Zerglings sneak a little bit forward, they should be able to confirm that plus one weapons, which should dissuade for away from going for a massive Mutalist play is going to want to invest in Scourge instead to keep the Corsair out of the air. Otherwise, you could just obliterate Overlord lines. No Citadel of Dune as of yet, so it looks like it is just going to be Zealot Corsair overall. Zerglings being pushed off the front. Second cannon warping in. Looks like we do have the fourth hatchery being constructed out on the front. And this might just turn into a uh, air obliteration clinic here momentarily. So Spire finishes that there is going to be sufficient gas, but not sufficient minerals to get the five mutalisks out all at once. An additional hatchery instead being dropped, so five, it looks like it's going to be five hatch muta. Usually you'll see players go up to six hatch muta and try to play a little bit more zergling heavy with the mutalisk to provide some support and keep the zealots off the front. The zealots marching out in favorable numbers versus the zergling, so looking to pick fights, able to get one kill right there. Corsair confirming everything overall. Second gas now being dropped and extractor, but interesting that it's, we got the second gas, but we do not have a hydral stun as of yet. And there's this sixth hatch Rita. Yeah, go six hatch muta overall. Corsair is grouping up. Let's see if they're going to be able to dodge the Scourge. Starting to peel away. And it looks like Snow going to go ahead and draw back now that the Corsairs no longer have vision out on the front. But plus one weapon's not that far from finishing. He's got a sizable Corsair count already. And let's see if these Scourge are going to recognize this. Are they going to recognize? So there's the five. We got five Corsair, and with a decent amount of micro, that's enough to take out these Scourge. The Scourge just now peeling around. And seeing the Stargate, and this, and we still don't have a Hydra Sten. Oh, sorry, there's the Hydra Sten and some Hydra Speed, but I don't see any Hydralisks being produced overall. And he's going to need a mess of Hydralisks, plus the Zelts underneath. And the Corsairs look like without any, yeah, literally no anti air. Creep Colony being dropped desperately. No Evolution Chamber there, and this is putting four very much in the red. So, he, and that's probably going to be GG right there, because he's got what, six in production? He got a lucky hit on the Corsair right there. It looks like they're just going to go a little bit out of position and do some additional damage. It looks like there was a lucky construction of some Hydralisks overall. Scourge trying to chase down the Corsair to get a reprieve, but on it, they, yeah, whoop. okay, they did manage to get a kill right there. Still six Corsairs overall, and man, four is deep, deep, deep in the red. So he's got all these hatcheries, and Really nothing to do, and huge supply lead by Snow. He doesn't even care about these four Hydralisks. He's like, I can still get Overlord kills underneath this. Yeah, oof, just obliterating it. That's again going to be a veritable supply cap. And this is without even the Zealots in the field. So this is eight Corsairs just running around hunting, keeping the Hydralisk counts low all by themselves. More gateways being constructed, and this is just pure error. Pure error aggression here. That's going to be 10 Corsairs. This is this is styling now. 10 Corsairs overall. Overlord speed being upgraded. Some Overlords are... Let's see if they get picked off to the north. They're trying to scramble, maybe, to get to a hidden position. But this is just a trail that's going to be exposed without Hydalisks in position once again. So they're getting wiped out for again in the red. And this is just starting to look like a snow clinic. Oof. Big grouping. At least there's a Spore Colony underneath. But look how quickly... Those overlords melted. 30 supply available for four. And the Hydra is trying to march out. As soon as the Zealot count ends up sizable enough to threaten these Hydralisks, that will be game. Four gateways, a fifth gateway dropped. Do we have speed being upgraded? I'm not even sure that it's necessary. Four uh, is going to have to... Okay, uh, able to get some Corsairs with the gauntlet there, but still losing more overlords and having to sink all of his minerals into the overlord count. The Hydralisk pressing forward. This is not where I would want the, to be if I was a Hydralisk. And honestly, four 
being in the red needs to preserve these Hydralisks rather than offer them up potentially to whatever gods the Protoss have. Overlords on the front are Dark Templar are being produced as well. Actually, this I might have underestimated for because this is a huge amount of Hydralisks now pressing into the natural. The Dark Templar survives. He's going to move behind the cannon line. Probe's pulling off the line because this is basically all in. The Corsairs are happy to go ahead and while the Hydralisks are gone, obliterate all the additional overlords. So now all Snow has to do is survive on the front. He doesn't have Psystorm though. Probes are having to defend themselves. He's got such a lead and it looks like plenty of cannons to go ahead and whittle down the Hydralisks out on the front. The Probes defending themselves. And the Cor Corsairs have, yeah, just obliterated. It looks like still more Hydralisks have managed to sneak out in between, however. More results produced and not a lot of cannons left for Snow overall. Still has a worker lead, is still in a very good position, generally. These five overlords, if they get wiped out, another Dark Templar can be produced to save the day. I'm wondering if that was... Did we see Psystorm cancelled right there, or completed? For making a game of it, I have to say. So he, he has managed to... There was such a heavy investment in Corsair that he was able to get those Hydralisks out and pull some pressure off the front. He's even been able to kill, it looks like, three of them. Ooh, more overlords. Getting hunted down. Again, it feels like four has been in the red this entire time. Honestly, I feel like this is mostly snow goofing around more than anything that's keeping four in this match. Lurker tech's done still in the red as these Hydralisks have been produced. It looks like the swarms are making their way back. A bunch of high... Yeah, he's just playing around now. He's got a huge amount of High Templar making their way out to just tr plop a massive amount of Psy Storm. Still, with that 7 count, that's enough to obliterate the Overlords extremely rapidly. 30 supply lead, but keep in mind, a lot of that is in Corsairs. 10 Zealots marching their way out into the field, finally. A massive amount of High Templar are going to remain at home base. And Snow on the prowl. Looking to strike some damage someplace. Three clock base pretty well saturated, maybe a little oversaturated with that drone count. Evolution chamber chiming away. Plus one weapons has finished. Zelt's gonna go ahead and sneak into the darkness. It looks like some additional Hydralis going to get caught and take some free damage. Corsair's finding nothing there as far as overlords at the three clock, but the Zelt's now sweeping in from both angles. Hydralis being preserved and lurkers dropping. Not quite in enough of a line to defend all of the drones, several of them getting wiped out, but enough to at least cause Snow to think twice about attacking that 3 o'clock. And keep in mind, we're not going to have an observatory out for quite some time because there is a huge gas and the Robo's not even down. There's a huge gas investment and everything else. The Zelt's peeling back, finding some Hydralisks that weren't being microed, so they're going to get obliterated. And the Corsairs have continued to look at this count. That's just, that's gratuitous right there. Gratuitous, I say. GG, yeah, GG indeed. With that 30 supply left to his name, he's got a lot of lurkers remaining. He's gonna try to expand. Four is bold. I would have GG'd when I only had 30 supply left here and considering all the losses, but he's gonna stay in this. Zelt's marching back out. There is a lurker at the three o'clock to provide some additional defense. Snow's gonna go ahead and expand to the nine o'clock on top of it. These overlords are going to die for sure. The Zealots don't even care about that lurker at this stage. Drones trying to defend themselves. Good drilling at the very least. But yeah, the overlords just continually getting obliterated. It seems like any overlord takes flight. This is like looking like World War One fighter, play, uh, fighter pilot numbers as far as survival rates uh, comparative to the overlords. That's a really that's a stretch of a metaphor, but I'm going to roll with it anyway. History nerds will enjoy it. And that's who I'm casting to, apparently. Alright. Lurker gonna sneak in to the 9 o'clock. Might be able to disrupt all of that, actually. Dragoon's filing out, but it's gonna be a while before this observatory is able to get an observer planted, so it's gonna force some cancellation overall. Snow wandering up. It looks like a High Templar dropping one storm. The rest of his High Templar second storm, so not gonna bother canceling the Nexus. The Zealot's able to catch some more Hydralisks mid-map in the meantime, but this is an additional base going up for four overall. Running off four bases, but he's just taking such catastrophic losses 
at this stage and is still down a considerable amount of supply. So we'll see if he, how he maintains, is in a completely defensive stance at this stage. And looks like the overlords will be spared this time. But as they're fanning out of position, ooh, yeah, overlords at least able to get in position to defend themselves for on complete anti-Corsair duty right now. You can see just the Hydalisks fanning, defending overlords everywhere. High Templar making their way back towards the natural expansion. Let's see if Snow get, starts to get aggressive at this stage. He does have plus one weapons, plus one armor, which is in a pretty good space for him. And it just keeps moving the... Keep, th keep threatening with those Corsairs to keep the Hydalisks back. A probe on the front wants to potentially get a kill. He's missed this, though. A control group of Hydralisks are making their way towards the 9 o'clock. However, they're going to be met by a lot of lightning right there. It looks like a Lurker is briefly trying to deny Snow a fourth base, but... Very quickly dispatched. And Snow now looking to wipe out any sort of roving army. So let's see, probes pulling off. I think they're just trying to draw these Hydralisks into a good stormable position, yeah. Only one side storm though. Gonna draw the rest of the army across the low ground. So a decent strike there. Oddly enough, Four actually has the worker lead right now, despite being down 20 supply and everything that's happened up to this stage. It just shows you how much Snow is messing around in this match. Hydralisks engaging on both fronts, it looks like they're going to get cleaned up. Plus two weapons is finished on those Hydralisks overall. I was waiting to see if another... No, that Overlord gets spared. Go figure. Considering what a massacre has been up to this stage, I was uh, expecting more devastation. Hive tech. Upgrading overall. Oh. Another obliteration of Overlords. There should be a... Se so they talk about having groups of things. There should be like a separate word for... All of the, uh, I guess it would be an explosion of overlords if we we're going by this match. Once again, 47 supply available. The Scourge not even going to be able to get to their target. A group of Hydalisks has managed to sneak through to maybe deny this fourth base. Looks like some units have been, are being cut off both directions. So at least, so small victory from four, able to deny that, but down 50 supply and is slowly getting to the point where he can actually start engaging supply once again. Looks like that Overlord was killed at the 9 o'clock after all. Hydralis is going to hide Cower, really, at the 6 o'clock base, which I do not blame them. More Overlords exposed as they're trying to dash from that 3 o'clock base to that protective location and just paying for it. Ugh, two, sun two Spore Colonies right there to try to defend... And now you have that massive army moving out. This is just, this is very size stormable. If there are troops waiting to do so, Hydralisks now fanning out, immediately greeting some lightning. Let's see if Snow pushes up into this or he pushes up towards the mineral. Is that mineral? Yeah, mineral only on this map. It looks like he's just going to engage. Do that natural expansion, dropping a good amount of Psy Storm right there. I think he, I think this is to try to open things up where you can attack the Overlords once again. They're huddled behind the two Spore Colonies. One Corsair moving forward to just scout their location. Yeah, he's just hunting them. That's what this game is about, killing Overlords. Another Overlord down. Four still in the red and still down 30 supply. This entire army is being held out of this. Snow just toying with this food right here. Toying with his food. Zealots pushing their way in. They're getting wiped out. Yeah, he's just trying to open up. He's trying to soften up the front so maybe he can take down those spore colonies so he can send the Corsairs in to kill what's left of those overlords. He's not. He could wipe out these bases if he wanted to, but he's he's opting not to. Looks like a few... I'm not sure how this Hydralisk and Zergling made their way out. More Corsairs making their way forward. The Corsairs poking at the overlords from the rear. I'm sure that there's a that's what she said joke there someplace. Hydralisks and Zerglings sneaking out now that supply is open to maybe go for a counterattack, but there are High Templar already waiting for them at that third, and it looks like the Zealots are going to spot them as they're coming across regardless. Snow has that sixth sense that something was able to slip through. 
And so pushing back out, it's going to lose a Dragoon on forward motion, but with the rest of that army creening in, really just doesn't need to use these side storms here, but is kind of lazily doing so anyway. Observers pinning on this Hydralis Force. They're fleeing, it looks like, to the bottom right-hand corner. Dragoon and a Zealot still hanging out, out on the front, it looks like. Hydral's going to go pocket all the way down to the bottom right. Another stream of Zerglings. So Hive Tech is up. Adrenal Upgrade probably finished in between there. No Defiler support, but at the very least able to get... Well, I was going to say get a cannon. Might not get a cannon here. Eating some Psy Storm as well. That's queuing the Corsairs, yeah, to take another shot. And they're going to go for it and dive in once again. And yet another obliteration. Oof. This is an ugly day for Overlords. An ugly, ugly day. I wonder if... I wonder if they give nerve endings to Overlords, because that just seems cruel, but it feels like they have to, right? For the tele... And I wonder if, like, the entire swarm feels it because of the telekinesis thing going on. Army just pinning in what's there to the bottom right. Four, once again in the red, now down 70 supply. Is trying to expand to the 12 o'clock location. Snow is going to go ahead and move to the 6 o'clock. Slowly fanned out. Otherwise... What would be interesting is if Snow had some sort of, uh, on his channel when he was streaming, some sort of subscriber goal to be like, for every Overlord killed, donate 100 bits or something like that. That would be kind of a fun goal for a StarCraft streamer of his caliber overall. Something along those lines. Finally moving in. Zerglings meeting Archons and getting obliterated. The Corsairs are still sitting fat. Let's look at the, well, the, I don't even need to look at the front. I want to see some of the kill counts. I want to see like a massive kill count on one of these. Unfortunately, it looks like the ones who got all the massive kills have already died. But Zerglings, Lurkers, etc. are trying to press in to defend this high ground expansion. Lurker not burrowed on the edge. Barely burrowed and explodes as he's able to do so. It looks like Defiler Tech Where's the Defiler Mount? Where's the Defiler Mount? Defiler Mount is being played there, but 4 recognizes he's been outclassed. Wasn't going to be able to hold out on this. I think I might have missed some more Overlords getting killed here at the 3 o'clock with those Corsairs. Yeah, it looks like he found some more Overlords. And that was it. Oof. Moral victory to Snow. He's so good at this game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Look for his play in this upcoming season of ASL. Thanks for listening.